Yo guys, all right, I just got done a lesson. I wanna share what we went over with you. It was a really, really awesome Skype lesson. And um, we're talking about rhythmic motif and how that really helps us build our improvisational skills all across the board. Now there's three main components to improvisation. I'm sure there's, there's more little ones, whatever. But um, what we teach is rhythmic motif, then note choice, and then all your fun stuff at the end, all your bends and all your slides and, and kind of inflections and dynamics. Now, if you're missing that first part, that, that is the biggest part. If you're missing that motif, there's not really a whole lot of note choice that you can add to make it interesting, and there's not really a whole lot of bends and, and, and slides and stuff to make it interesting. What I mean by that is, usually we'll get a student that comes in and just, and the solo's going nowhere, right? And then because it's starting to go nowhere and getting boring um, and having zero direction, they start just doubling up. Right, and it's still, oh, now, I, now I have nothing. And, and they're looking because they bypassed that kind of first core, that step one, they're on step two, they're, they're not looking back and they're not sure how to construct and make their solos interesting. So we try to beat motifs over the head until it's boring. Now this one that we were doing just at the end of the lesson, Right? That's what we were mainly working on. Now I would have the student do that and then pick another one, do that, and then pick another motif and do that and stick to it until it becomes very monotonous and very boring, but I want that to be beaten into their head. Now the reason is, we talk about that part of solos, that construction, and then there is also a chaotic part of solos and you're kind of blending the two. But if I were to jump in, <laughs> that still has miniature construction within the chaos. So there still is direction, all right? And we, I kind of describe it as like a car driving at night. It's not like what I'm doing this. You know, I got the headlights on and everything's good and I can see where I'm going. And then when I do the fast stuff, I shut the headlights on. And then all of a sudden I have no idea until I come back to another, another constructed motif, all right? So that's why this part is so important because it will help you all around. Now I have a couple examples, check them out. So this first round is going to be about um, rhythm. So what we're gonna do is there's gonna be an example, it's going to be the motif itself and you're gonna kind of feel it and be able to sing it back and it's gonna be very digestible. And then the next round of it, we're gonna do the same rhythm, we're just going to take out the specific note choices. You, you can see that our, the rhythm is still there and the motif is still there. And then on the third example, it's going to be the same notes, but a completely static and, and normalized rhythm that has no motif. So, so check them out and you can kind of see the difference between the three. And I did make them pretty exaggerated. So if you listen to those three examples again, that first motif is what I want to go for. But if that rhythm is not there, the note choice isn't going to help it any. Now as you can hear, if I were to do just that, that isn't as interesting as, right? So the note choices are definitely boosting up the quality of that melody but that wouldn't be able to happen if we didn't have part one to it. So just a, another quick example, I'm gonna go through some of the things that I'll do with my students to get eventually to that point.
Now, you would be surprised at how many of my students, even some of my shredder students, cannot sit and just do that. <laughs> twice in a row. And, and, and continue to make them up as we go. If I just throw a metronome on, just continuing to give me easy clapping patterns, you know, an A clapping pattern, and then an A clapping pattern repeating, and then another one, a B and a B pattern, and a C and a C pattern. And that gets very difficult for people if it's not something that they've trained to do. Um, so now, lastly, because we're talking so much about pillar one and building that up and building the rhythmic phrasing, I'm gonna show you an example of if I stay on the rhythm, but my notes get chaotic, how that also doesn't help. And that's why I don't wanna shy away from note choice because in this rhythm, there's a, or I'm sorry, in that motif, there's a lot of cool things that are happening. And, and one of the best ones is it's an A minor and we're always resolving back to that A, right? But we're starting here, we're playing the, the, the minor third, the nine or the second, and then the flat seven. So we're doing a lot of dancing around the, the A. We're, we're dancing around it and then, and then resolving back to the A at the end. And that's giving it, um, that's giving it a sense of motion using the pitch. So I, I, as we're building pillar one, we get into note choice. Now, if I take note choice away and we're only on pillar one, it's going to sound chaotic. All right, guys, I hope that helped. Now, the best way to do this is to just go through this video, continually put on a backing track and just keep coming up with your own motifs and see if you can stick to playing something. And then just give me another one. over and over, no matter how boring it gets. And that is going to make everything so much stronger across the board, even in your fast runs.